This video will explain an exciting new feature in Determined AI, the Model Hub platform that allows you to interface Hugging Faces transformers, tokenizers, and datasets APIs with the Determined AI deep learning training platform. This allows you to use the pre-trained transformers, tokenizers, and just the transformer implementations overall, as well as the now implemented uh, datasets packages where they have uh, as of now, about 1,065 different datasets that are in the Hugging Face uh, datasets API, they can easily interface with this Determined AI uh, Model Hub syntax. So this video is going to explain how to use the Determined AI Model Hub to run experiments like learning rate searches or, say, batch size searches, uh, different optimizers, and then also how to train language models using the Determined AI platform, which helps you avoid uh, babysitting your experiments. And then really importantly for training language models where you have these big models, you can use the distributed training of Determined AI which is easily interfaced on top of the uh, preemptible spot instances from AWS, which is cheaper than other ways of doing it, and Determined AI saves you a lot of overhead with uh, trying to do this. So uh, what we're seeing here is an example of a learning rate search on the Glue benchmark with the machine reading paraphrase corpus, and you can see this feature of ASHA, the adaptive, the asynchronous uh, hyperparameter search where it has this a dynamic resource allocation between different learning rate configurations. So we see the most promising configurations are allocated more computation than these other configurations that weren't performing as well, like this one that only has, i uh, say, 31.6% accuracy or whatever the metric was here. But we see how we uh, run through all these different trials and search through these different configurations to find the best learning rate. And as we go through this other visualization, we see this ASHA benefit and all these other features that we'll get into in this video. The Hugging Face Transformers library greatly facilitates using these transformers for natural language processing and lately increasingly computer vision applications as well. And we'll imagine all of these pre-trained models are going to be integrated into Hugging Face for all different kinds of data domains. So as of now, we have 12,233 models hosted on Hugging Face's uh, model hub. So Hugging Face's model hub and then Determine's model hub now is going to be letting us interface the Determine training platform with these pre-trained models. So if you don't want to have to bother with exactly implementing the correct uh, transformer architecture and say PyTorch or Keras or something like that. And you also want to have these pre-trained weights because it's expensive to pre-train a GBT2 model on all that uh, language modeling with these big data sets and so on. So it helps a lot to have these pre-trained uh, checkpoints. And now with the Determined Model Hub, it's easy to interface these things with the Determined platform. So another exciting feature of Hugging Face is that it hosts 1,065 data sets. So in this example, we're going to be seeing how to access the Hugging Face data set loader within the uh, Model Hub determined interface. So we can use the Glue benchmark, uh, the Swag uh, benchmark, as well as the wiki text for training a language model. So you can look through these 1,065 data sets, all sorts of really exciting things for looking for a potential natural language processing research project. And I think they do have some computer vision data sets in here as well. I've made a couple of videos now explaining some of the features behind the Determined AI platform. And these videos will be linked in comments on the video as well as the description of the video but here's a quick re recap of these features in the determined AI training platform so this uh, orange diagram illustrates some of these different features where we have things like distributed training where you can uh, not have to worry about these uh, data communication these kind of things that happen under the hood when you're scaling up to you know two or more GPUs cluster sharing and resource management if you're sharing one cluster with a team and you can easily interface uh, each experiment with this web UI visualization which I found to be really nice as I've been playing around with this it's really cool to have this collection of all the experiments and then again anyone with the uh, with the link to the with the URL to the cluster can send an experiment off to it from remote locations and then share it and organize it with this web UI of the cluster sharing. So in experiment tracking, having this interface again where you can see the results of all the experiments, you can click on the view configuration file, see the different hyperparameters that were passed through and all these different things, the model, download the, you can download the exact files that were sent to the model if again you're managing these uh, teams that are all sharing one cluster together for the computation. Then these visualizations, as we saw previously, this uh, learning rate visualization will look at these heat maps all these different tools for seeing the impact of these hyperparameters, and then also coming neural architecture search, batch inference, and then integrating with the uh, data pipelines and the training data accelerators and these kinds of things. But this hyperparameter search is one of the really exciting features of Determined AI. And I made another video uh, going through Liam Lee's article, Why Does No One Use Advanced Hyperparameter Tuning, that illustrates some of these different uh, components of what makes uh, hyperparameter tuning hard in practice. So we have all these algorithms like 
uh, auto augment, population-based training, and then the ASHA, Hyperband, these algorithms that are implemented and determined, and really implementing them can be challenging due to these problems of uh, scaling, integrating with the back end, and communicating with distributed training, and then having nice user interfaces for doing this kind of search. So this video will also be linked in the description of the video. And then just as one more example, I made a quick video walking through their uh, CIFAR 10 example for just overall understanding this determined uh, trial interface, which may help you understand exactly how the Hugging Face transformers are integrated with the determined platform. So this is an example of the web UI where you can visualize what experiments are being sent to the cluster to have this kind of organization of resource sharing. So I think it's really interesting and uh, Determined AI hosts these uh, lunch and learn training sessions where they show how to uh, run these experiments and use the Determined platform where they all share the same cluster and everyone gets a username and password to send experiments to this cluster. And you can see this UI for organizing these experiments, which is really interesting for training these deep learning models. So with that said, let's get into the details behind this glue trial and understand what's happening with this hyperparameter search optimization with the ASHA algorithm. This blog post from Liam Lee in the Carnegie Mellon machine learning blog titled Massively Parallel Hyperparameter Optimization illustrates the ASHA hyperparameter search algorithm. So what's happening with ASHA, the motivation, is that you have all these different hyperparameter configurations and you want to allocate just random amounts of resources in the beginning to kind of sample each of these different hyperparameter configurations and see which ones are more promising to allocate further computation to. So the original idea in hyperband is this idea of having uh, you know, unequal dynamic resource allocation throughout training, but it requires this synchronization step where some are discussing the difference between uh, population-based training and then population-based bandit optimization in the AI weekly update series, that when you introduce this centralized controller for hyperparameter configuration, for hyperparameter optimization, you have to wait for all these distributed agents to finish their workload and then communicate the results to have the, you know, next round of updates. So the asynchronous success of having algorithm is a way to do this without having this synchronization bottle next step and just uh, dynamically have this update and then allocate these resources. So implementation of this could be challenging, but Determined AI has already implemented it and it's really fun to play around with and we're going to see it in action with the learning rate search on the Glue benchmark. So here's an example of a learning rate search on the Glue benchmark using the uh, Hugging Face Distill BERT base uncase model. So Distill BERT is this model uh, developed by Hugging Face that's a knowledge distillation uh, strategy of BERT, so it's a smaller compressed model of the original uh, BERT model from Google. So what we're doing here is we're searching through this learning rate scale in order to find the optimal learning rate for this machine reading paraphrase corpus where I think we have two different paraphrases of each other and we want to classify them as uh, paraphrases or uh, completely unrelated sentences similar to say the Quora duplicate uh, question detection task or say just generally this problem of semantic similarity between these uh, two paraphrases of sentences. So anyway, so the idea here is the learning rate scale that we're gonna be searching through. So we have a log scale where we go the minimum value is 10 to the minus five and the maximum value is 10 to the minus three as we optimize and use this ASHA algorithm to find the perfect learning rate for this problem. So now we can visualize the results of this hyperparameter search. So we've seen the visualization, the different uh, values that the search ends up taking on. So in the end, we end up finding that the best uh, learning rate performs between uh, this value of 0 0.0000218, this really small learning rate is what ends up performing the best as we uh, continue out this experiment. So we see going back to the uh, overall trials as we have this visualization, what we're seeing here is the filtering with the ASHA search as it's dynamically allocating resources to uh, other hyperparameter configurations. And we see this other uh, visualization where we see that these uh, really small learning rates tend to perform better than you know these other larger values and then so looking at this heat map further we can see uh, this illustration of the learning rates and also we can filter this by how many batches were processed so we can see at the end just the the final learning rates that made it all the way to the uh, all the way to the final uh, configuration with the asha and ended up making it to the end with further training we see the difference there as we want to filter and further search through these values so we have these interesting visualizations where we can uh, filter it based on how many batches were processed and understand the workings of the ASHA algorithm and then overall get a sense of the best hyperparameter performing for our problem in which case we see at the top this trial ID and we go to the hyperparameters and we see that it's this really small uh, learning rate value for this problem and again you can see all the configuration the hyperparameters the epsilon de optimizer the batch size 
the learning rate scheduler, and then this is the checkpoint model from Hugging Face, the distilled BERT base uncased model, as we're fine tuning it for sequence classification on the glue benchmark with this paraphrase comparison task. So as far as going under the hood a little bit and seeing what you send off to the uh, determined cluster in terms of the code, here's an example of the glue configuration from the determined text classification example hosted on the uh, determined uh, Hugging Face Model Hub examples that'll be linked in the description of this video. So uh, what you do is here's where you pass in the uh, pre-trained transformer from Hugging Face that you want to access. Uh, you pass in the mode for sequence classification as you have these, uh, say like if you've seen the Hugging Face uh, TF model for sequence classification, uh, this kind of thing. And then you have the fine tuning task where we access the data set and we use it to index these keys as this is uh, set up for the uh, glue benchmark. And the glue benchmark is a collection of these different tasks like COLA, which is uh, grammar acceptability, or the machine reading uh, paraphrase corpus, we're comparing these two uh, paraphrases and classifying them as being semantically similar. So here are the different uh, hyperparameters. So what we did with the learning rate is we had pasted in this, uh, val this value to search through. So instead of having just a single configuration, we pass in this interval for the learning rate to index the uh, log scale of going all the way down to 10 to the minus 5 up to 10 to the minus 3. And then we would also change the searcher from the single to the ASHA uh, searcher algorithm, which we'll look at next with how to uh, use a custom data set. So this is an example of how to use the glue benchmark using data set name, data set config, and it's using the Hugging Face uh, data set uh, library in order to load it. So it makes it really easy to use any of those 1,064 different uh, data sets in the Hugging Face uh, data set hosted uh, platform. So in addition to the glue benchmark, Hugging Face has 1,064 other data sets hosted on the data set platform that can be accessed with this data set loader interface. So once you find the data set that you want to use, such as the swag situations with adversarial generations data set, what you need to find is the uh, data instances. So they have different configurations. So in this case, the regular configuration is the way uh, that we want to uh, process this data and other data sets might have uh, more than one way of uh, formatting it. So then you could index it with index it with things like say sentence one, sentence two, if it's like a comparison task, and so on with accessing the data for these different data sets. So once you have that, what you put into the YAML configuration file for the determined uh, interface is the data set name, so swag, and the data set configuration name, in this case regular. So you also might need to change the uh, model mode depending on the task, whether it's uh, multiple choice in this case, or if it's a question answering or one of these other problems. And then you can again also play around with different uh, pre-trained checkpoints from the Hugging Face Transformers. So next up we have an example of training a language model with the determined AI platform. So this is a quick example of doing this where we have the uh, continual visualization of the decreasing validation perplexity metric as we train the uh, mass language model. So looking at the configuration, we can see how we set up this experiment. So uh, we start off with the data set name that we want to model, in this case, the wiki text data set, and the configuration, the wiki text 2 raw version 1, as you, again, look through the uh, Hugging Face data set page for this wiki text data set. Then we have the mass language modeling probability, and then we have just one configuration of hyperparameters, as generally uh, training these models takes a long time. And this is where we have our pre-trained model, the Roberta base model. So this is how we can run a... Uh, a mass language modeling experiment with the determined AI platform. So generally, since language modeling training can take a long time and you want to take these weights, save them, uh, either push them to the model hub or save them locally or save them in some kind of storage system, here's how you do that once you finish training with the uh, determined interface. So once you finish training, you click on the uh, trial object and then you have the uh, checkpoint. So you click here and you have the checkpoint and this is the UID that you'll use to access these uh, weights when you go to the uh, checkpoint object in the notebook for the term. So you can launch this notebook and then you can load the hugging face uh, syntax for loading in the weights and then pushing into the model hub. So next we'll look at uh, the latest Transformers version 4.8 of how to push these uh, pre-trained checkpoints to the model hub if you wanna just host the weights there. So here's the latest from hugging face in the Transformers version 4.8 on how to take these models that you've just trained and push them to the hugging face model hub uh, storage. So what you do is you can uh, take the model and you can get the weights from the uh, checkpoint ID and then you can put it into this trainer object from Hugging Face and then you can just push it to the hub with this end trainer.push to hub and then it'll add this new model to the Hugging Face model hub if you want to store your models there. In addition to pushing the uh, pre-trained checkpoint to the model hub, you can also download it with the command line interface using the syntax where you have things like the uh, dead experiment download where you have the experiment IDs or the checkpoint download for the uh, transformer. Thank you so much for watching this overview of the Determined AI Model Hub. To interface the deep learning training platform features of Determined AI like 
resource tracking, experiment visualization, distributed training, and the hyperparameter optimization with features in the Hugging Face Transformers Library, Tokenizers, and the Hugging Face Dataset Loaders where they have 1,064 different datasets and roughly 12,000 pre-trained models to test out with with this interface between Determined AI and Hugging Face. Thank you so much and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.